Call of Duty Modern Warfare Warzone has finally launched and in this video I will discuss performance benchmarks of each graphical setting, together with side-by-side -side comparisons where applicable. Now this video is primarily directed to PC players and all the performance benchmarks are performed on a 99-9900K clocked at 5GHz together with an RTX 2080 running at a resolution of 1440p. Note that all benchmarks that I'm showing in this video are very much tied to my system, so your mileage may absolutely vary. However, I still hope that this video can provide you some guidance on how individual settings influence your game. I provide timestamps in the description and in the pinned comment such that you can quickly find exactly what you're looking for. Additionally, you can find a detailed blog post with all the performance numbers on my blog linked in the card. But before jumping right into the game, you want to make sure to enable the Windows Game Mode. You can find this by clicking on Start menu and type in Game Mode and make sure under the Game Mode tab that this is enabled. Now, in previous versions of Windows 10, this would actually lead to reduced in-game performance, but with the latest update, you should see absolutely no difference in-game whether you have this turned on or off. However, if you plan on live streaming, then you absolutely must have this enabled, as this mode includes a fix preventing your games to use too much GPU performance, leaving basically none left for OBS or whichever streaming software you're using, and this basically results in super laggy gameplay on stream. So if you want to live stream, make sure this is turned on. On the other hand, make sure that the Windows Game Bar is turned off as well as background capturing. Alright, let's hop into the game settings. Now the first setting that strongly influences your in-game performance is the field of view. Now commonly you would expect that a low field of view would yield high frames per second whereas a high field of view would give you low performance as more has to be drawn on screen. However, in Modern Warfare Warzone, this doesn't quite work this way. Interestingly, as you can see from this comparison, the higher field of view that we choose, the higher performance we get in-game. You can see the performance figures in the top right hand corner. Now I think the reason why this is, is as we widen our field of view, the less detail is going to be drawn on screen in Modern Warfare and therefore the higher the overall performance is. Now in terms of actual numbers, you can see the performance difference when running on low settings on screen right now. So when going down from a field of view of 90, which is the standard, to 60, you can see that I'm losing around 4% of my performance. And on the other hand, if I go up to 120, then I gain about 4%. Similar differences are found on medium settings where I again lose about 4% of my performance when I go down to a 60 field of view, whereas on the other hand I gain 5% by going to 120. And pretty much the same results are found at high settings. So really this is rather counterintuitive and if you want to have high performance then definitely don't run at a low field of view. In my opinion, a field of view of 100 gives you a nice balance between high performance while still seeing a lot of your game but not having this ultra wide field of view of 120 where everything seems to be whizzing around your screen at the speed of light. While we're in this tab, here's a short tip. Make sure to enable Skip Introduction Movie in order to not always get blasted by the Modern Warfare logo whenever you start this game. When going to the Graphics tab, the first option that we have is the Display Mode. Now on my system, the only mode with significantly different performance was the Windowed Mode. In there, I lost about 7 FPS or 5% of my performance, whereas with the other options I had exactly the same performance. Now personally, I prefer full screen extended window as I can L tap super fast in and out of the game without actually having to reload the game. Next I obviously use my primary graphics card and a render resolution of 100. Aspect ratio I keep at automatic and VSync is disabled. Custom frame rate limit I keep on unlimited. I did test with custom, however I didn't see any noticeable difference in performance. Note that if you're live streaming and you do struggle with smooth gameplay on stream, then setting a custom frame rate limit might actually help your live streaming performance. In any other case, put this to unlimited. Nvidia highlights I keep on disabled as I anyway have Nvidia Shadowplay running in the background all the time. Now with Shadowplay enabled, putting this to enabled doesn't give you any performance difference whatsoever. On the other hand, disabling Shadowplay itself does give me a 5 FPS boost or a difference of about 3%. Now whenever you do reinstall new Nvidia drivers, then it is recommended to restart the shader installation progress. Otherwise, don't touch this option. Display Gamma you want to put on sRGB as most of you guys are probably playing on regular computer monitors. 
Now let's talk about texture resolution. As you can see from this in-game comparison, the difference between very low and low is actually quite significant and quite frankly very low just looks absolutely horrible. Now in my case I lose about 2% of my performance when going to low and another percent when going to normal. In my opinion I don't really see much of a difference between normal and high and the performance also reflects in that as it doesn't really change too much. My recommended solution here is to use normal texture resolution as it gives you a nice image quality while at the same time not overwhelming your game with too many high resolution textures. For anisotropic filtering I see about a 0.5% decrease in performance when going to normal so this is 1 FPS and then once again the same performance when going to high. In my opinion there is basically no performance difference between normal and high and therefore you might as well use high as it just looks much better in game. Next comes a bit of an odd quality setting and that is the particle quality. And basically what it does is it's kind of this resolution of particles flying about on your screen. Now from this comparison you basically aren't able to discern much of a difference in the fire. However at the same time I'm getting about 2 fps higher performance with high settings. So this is actually quite counterintuitive but by setting particle quality to high you might gain a few fps. Bullet impacts and sprays obviously has absolutely no impact on your performance so you might as well enable it. Both tessellation options make me lose about 3 fps or 2% in terms of performance differences so you might as well set it to all. Next let's move to the shadow map resolution. On screen you can see once again a comparison between the shadows on low, normal, high and extra. And as you can see setting the shadow map resolution to a higher value actually makes you drop quite significant amount of frames. So unless you like to stare at your own or your teammates shadows set this to normal and move on. Next comes cache spot shadows and from my testing I see absolutely no difference in performance when this is enabled or disabled so you might as well enable it in case that it might actually benefit you in terms of performance down the line. On the other hand cache sun shadows actually gives me about a 4 fps boost in performance so you definitely want to make sure to enable this option. Particle lightning is one of the super odd options in modern warfare. From my testing there is basically no difference in between these different options. I've tried this with many different grenades and they all seem to look exactly the same. The performance also doesn't really measurably change. I mean 1 fps more or less is pretty much the same right? So since there is absolutely no difference you might as well stick to low. Enabling real time ray tracing is obviously going to absolutely butcher your in game performance. So unless you want to record some sexy in game cinematics absolutely make sure to have this disabled. Ambient occlusion is another one of those very odd settings in modern warfare. Now what it basically does is it kind of adds shadows to all objects that are close to walls. So basically there's just more shadows that are going on in the scene. Now from my experience modern warfare is already super dark when looking down corridors or halls. So reducing the amount of shadows should be your primary goal here. Additionally when looking at the performance numbers I found about an 8 fps drop in performance with the first option that's about 5.5%, a 1 fps difference with the second and finally when going to both I lose 9 fps or 6%. So in my opinion absolutely set this to disabled. Enabling screen space reflections make me lose about 2 fps or 1% and when going to normal or high I lose about 5 fps or 3.5%. Since this is kind of a useless option that just uses performance, I mean how often do you look into a puddle of water to see your enemies, I like to keep this simply at low. Next let's have a look at what anti-aliasing is doing with our in-game performance. Now as you can see from this comparison the performance is quite significantly affected by anti-aliasing. This is absolutely expected and when going to SMAA 1 times I lose about 5% whereas SMAA 2 times uh, makes me drop about 11% and finally the filmic SMA two times drops me about 15% of my entire performance. Now in my opinion there isn't much of a difference between SMAA and filmic SMAA so you might as well just use SMAA two times or if you don't care much about anti-aliasing of course simply disabling this option gives you the highest possible performance in game. However me personally I do like to have my game a little bit smoother so I prefer SMAA two times. Next there is the option to enable depth of field and I would highly recommend you to disable this option as my testing revealed about an 8 fps or 5.5% performance decrease when enabling field of depth. 
Additionally, your gun will also become a pixelated mess, so there is really not much of a point to enable this option. Filmic strength you want to set to 1, and motion blur should always be disabled in my opinion. Finally, I don't really see much of a difference in film grain, and as I like to have the clearest possible picture, I like to set this to 0. So in summary, use these settings if you're looking for the best performance while still being able to enjoy the stunning graphics of Modern Warfare. On the other hand, if you're looking for the absolute best performance no matter what, then disable everything in the settings except for particle quality, as well as cache spot shadows and cache sun shadows. Additionally, don't forget to set a high field of view as this will result in even higher performance. But that about wraps it up for today's video guys, I hope this video was helpful and you could improve your performance in Modern Warfare. If you still have any questions then don't hesitate to leave them down below and if you want a follow up video where I'm doing an in depth comparison of the different audio mixes in Modern Warfare then definitely tell me in the comments below. But that's it for today's video guys, thank you so much for watching, stay healthy and don't snipe your enemies from the gas.